Hey everyone, welcome to episode 6 of the Gorilla Social Work Podcast. We have got a good one for you today. Title of this episode is The Truth About Pedophilia and Sexual Assault. It's been a lot going on. If you haven't been living under a rock, you've been noticing a lot of things going on with politicians, celebrities, a lot of sexual behavior, abusive behavior, harassment being outed. So going a little crazy right now. So we're going to get into some of that. Also, the definition, clinical definition of pedophilia that's being thrown around a lot. I think there's a lot of misunderstandings there. So we get into definition of that, our interpretation of a bit of what's going on. Uh, Gorilla Social Work brought to you by Alpha Counseling and Treatment, which provides emotional strength for better living through individual, group, and family counseling services. If you want more information on that, check out the website at utahsbesttherapy.com and Without any further delay, we will just get into the episode. have a fake episode you remember like the chris farley show where he's purposely <laughs> really nervous no. <laughs> on saturday night live where chris farley has the talk show oh yeah that's he's, right he's interviewing that's right. people and he's like purposely nervous <laughs> so like uh t- what's what's your favorite stuff i remember I love when he's interviewing paul mccartney's all um remember when you were with the beatles <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that that was that was remember. cool huh? <laughs> yeah Say, poor Chris Farley. Uh, yeah. Well, his body is not like you look at that dude though, and you're like, "Yeah, your your body's not cut out for heroin, Holmes." Like, <laughs> well, I love just going crazy too. His heart's probably like, "Uh, I can't yeah. keep doing this." Yeah, yeah. That's what he, that's what he died from, right? Heroin overdose. Yeah, heart yeah, attack. Yeah, heart attack. Think, yeah. yeah, due to it. Oh well, not. wasn't it coke? It was some well, cocaine cool do it too, man. It's probably everything. Although some. cocaine, you don't get cocaine in America anymore. Well, have you seen the? Did you ever see the the pictures <laughs> of it when yeah. they found him? No, it's it pretty cool. It's pretty rough. Yeah, he just Ugh. they found him in his. Yeah, was he naked? I hope. <sighs> I wish. <laughs> no. Well, what? How'd they find him? Someone came just to check on him. He was just dead. He basically had a heart attack by himself. And well, yeah, but you made it, made it sound like his dogs were eating him when they found <laughs> or something. They, they will be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just, he, he looks pretty nasty. Oh, yeah. like, like as far as dead bodies go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looked great for a dead yeah. body. Other than the other ones I've seen, he looked fine. <laughs> yeah, like how many dead bodies are you looking at, dude? You walk in, you see... Well, like remember Rotten.com? Didn't you ever check out that? They had, they had Tupac's. Like, remember, that was like yeah. the big thing. It's like, but his face is turning away. I don't know if that's He's really still Tupac. alive. Yeah. <laughs> Rotten.com. You never went to that website? No, no, it's, it's no. Dumb. That was like one dumb of the first it. websites that would post like autopsy Gore. pictures and stuff. Gore. Yeah, but there's not... But Some rotten, dude. No, that just rotten. sounds like... They're way more than that. That sounds like There was awful. plenty on that site. I don't ever want to go to that website. Yeah, you know, well, dude... I, I wouldn't go now. It's probably some you gotta be, website. You got to be careful because sometimes... Sometimes, like, <laughs> you catch yourself... Because you're looking for, like, a funny picture, you know? Like, if we're, in, we're, if we're in a thread talking or something, we're looking for a funny picture. And I was remembering um, when we were talking about your client who was going blind... The br- <laughs> and I was and, just gonna and say, we said, and we said, I can't remember what the conversation was about, but we were obviously saying, well, should we complete him? And you know, and then I just made the joke of, well, what's he gonna do? Look at braille porn? And then I was like, I wonder if that's a thing. And so then I Google it, and of course, the only thing that came up with that was, was that Robin Hood men in tights thing, yeah, you know, which yeah. was pretty funny actually. But then I I was showing um, a clip in group that was on the internet, so I pull it up, and some of the guys are like. What the fuck is Braille porn doing in your, <laughs> your search bar? I'm like, I'm like, oh no, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> it's not what it looks like. Yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, dude it's. Uh, I, I just. I, I like. I almost. I was in group just last night on Sunday, and we were talking about like all this. Um, like it was. Kind of, I can't remember what subject it got onto because they were. Ta- well, we were talking about all this sexual harassment stuff that was coming out in the media. You know. And they and they started talking about um, this 
uh, like the different types of, you know, there's metrosexual and like it's gone from way far beyond that, right? And now because with with the, and the, of course, somebody said the, you know, the trans community. I, I hate that word community. community. Oh my god, you know. And then they started the whole groups are joking. They're like, we're part of the SO community. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you, it was pretty. It was yeah. pretty funny though. And they kept saying that, but he said there was a thing called lumber sexuals, right? Which kind has like a to lower be exactly back. what it sounds like. It, lum, it's lumbar. <laughs> lumbar <laughs> but I was like, so Google it, dude. And then I got halfway through and I was like, wait, no. Like, I'm not going to Google lumbar sexuals. Is it dudes with beards? Huh? Is it dudes with beards? I don't know. Lumber. I don't know just it's like a lumberjack. <laughs> yeah. Lumber That's what I think sexual. of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is it? Look, look that thing up. I'll look it up. Yeah. I, I worry, man. There this was is, a. I was watching. It's got to be a big. I was watching a documentary. Brute. What was it called? Uh, it was on Netflix. I don't know if it still is. But did you ever watch that? Terms and conditions may apply. Uh-uh. Where it was talking about how like privacy agreements and all that have changed over time, which is pretty creepy if you watch it. But there was one where this guy, <clears throat> the police showed up at his house and like pulled him out of the house and started questioning him and his wife separately. Basically, what had happened was he was searching like how to kill your wife, how to kill your wife and get away with it, like how to do all this. So they sh- it flagged in this thing, yeah, like, like uh, whatever what it would be like hot words or whatever. And so it ended up being that he's a writer for a crime show, so he was looking up stuff like this. Oh. But it flagged to the police department that he was trying to kill his wife. So they actually came to his house. Like she didn't complain or anything. They just it just showed up like a hot really? words. Really? Yeah. So you could crazy. you could search those things and. And it would come up, right? Like, I mean, so you're telling me if I search how to kill my wife, right? someone's watching. Someone's going to get that somewhere. So they may say, oh, we should put in a complaint. Or Wow. That's no, it's, it's pretty crazy if you watch it. Terms and conditions may apply, I think, is the name of it. Yeah, well, it's what, pretty crazy. That's, yeah, that is kind It of, just shows how all these so agreements have changed over time. Look up lumber sexual. Oh, I'm looking at it. Fucking up. FBI just How do you spell it? Is it, or is it? Or is it office space? It's lumber sexual. <laughs> <laughs> lumber. <laughs> Oh, how's yeah. this lumber? Yeah, <laughs> just lumber sexual, dude. He just, may have been full of it. I don't know. I'm sure. Just it's type real. it in. Lumber sexual images. What the hell? No, don't do, do that. It. Let's go don't images. Do that. that could nothing. A man who's what well, this can't be right. Yeah, read it. A man whose style of dress and appearance is reminiscent of the ruggedly masculine stereotype of the lumberjack. That's what I'm saying. As wearing plaid shirts, so basically like a hipster. Yeah, and having they're... a beard, Jeff. How did? Oh man! When you think about it, that's oh, exactly here we what go. it is. Urban Dictionary. Hold yeah, on. beautiful. This is always they're good. always right, <laughs> especially about the keto diet. <laughs> that's true. We need to revisit that. Yeah, gotta, <laughs> no, got to enter our own yeah. definition. <laughs> a sexy, a lumber sexual is a sexy man who dresses in denim, leather, and flannel, and has a ruggedly sensual beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's weird, man. That's weird. You said a hipster. But that's what the that's what they do. That's kind of what it is. That's how though. they dress, and they got suspenders too. You put suspenders on that dude, and like some high top Doc Martens, and you got a fucking hipster like all day. <laughs> I love this one. It just says lumberjacks are typically known for their strength and being able to work with their hands. However, most lumber sexuals would be stumped by changing attire. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> So not a real man. So, so basically, I, someone that wants to look like so wait, a rugged is, like lumberjack is Jeff a lumber sexual? That man? would be me for sure. Uh, I can't do anything mechanical. I just look tough. I, I yeah, but you can actually do like tough things, like as far as like working out. He can, he can't change oil though. I can't That's change true. oil. I can't either. I'm not saying like yeah, no I way. Can't change man. oil. No way. I can't. I, I can lift heavy stuff, and I got have, a great like, beard. You would at least have the physical appearance, though. Because a picture like a really skinny dude wearing like denim and then flannel and has a big yeah. beard, you'd be like, dude, you don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah dude. Like, I don't, I'm not interested in all that stuff with like doing things. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just doing things. I mean, like fixing stuff. Like, dude, I turned in my man card a long time ago, especially with cars. Like, your hands get so dirty. I think I like identifying as a lumber sexual. You, as what? As a lumber sexual. Now yeah. that a lumber yeah, sexual? Yeah, I, I think it fits me. Yeah, with the beard, it's fitting. I yeah. could never grow a beard like that. Yeah. Like, there's there's 11-year-old girls who can grow better facial hair than yeah, me. Yeah, that's about it's how horrible. I am. Yeah, it's not good. So, well, anyway. Yeah, so. all this crazy sex stuff in the news. That's kind of what we want to talk about, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, That was a horrible lead-in. That was, well, that was bad. That was an awful. I'm really I'm disappointed. There's been worse. We were talking Fine. about lumber sexuals, dude. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So speaking of you lumbersexuals, know, speaking how about of all Harvey these rapists? Weinstein. Dude, so no, think about it though. Like, um, I, I would just wanted to see what you guys thought because I was talking. Part of this bugs me because it's like, um, okay, so everything's flooding in now, right? As if it's all, but, and this is clearly, I think that there's, this is kind of like strength in numbers, you know? So when a, when one victim comes out, then clearly other people feel that now they they too can have a voice and whatnot. And, and so there's a phenomenon there. You know, it's um, one of the, uh, I've heard somebody talking about this on a show that was saying, well, especially with Harvey Weinstein, you know, was it, was it Rose McGowan who kind of kicked it all off? Yeah, that sounds right. So they were saying, you know, she's a, actress on the way out and um and I don't know if this is accurate but they were they were dogging on her hard because mm-hmm. in that movie Planet Terror which is awesome by the way is it Robert Ramirez is that the director of that the, he's he did that I think uh, so Brian yeah. House with, yeah, with yeah. Quentin Tarantino anyway he, they were saying and I don't know if this is accurate I was just watching a show I can't remember what it was but they were saying she had an affair with him the director on that show and like broke up his family and everything right so um and uh so they were basically saying well wait a minute so Rose McGowan <laughs> wasn't wasn't getting a role and so she decided to keep you know her rising star by or keep her starlight yeah. by by coming out with this and then all these people who way back in the day who weren't complaining when they were getting these million dollar roles now are coming back to get their next 15 minutes of fame and everything i was like eh, i don't know that's a little that's a little cynical on on that end that's the that's one of the main things that a lot of people ask me about. If you guys been getting people quizzing you, like what your thoughts are on it, Dude, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I get hit up all the time. Like, I mean, we, you could probably make a case that with, I mean, pick a celebrity and the number of accusations that there, there's going to be some people that are out to make a buck, but I don't know. I, I, I tend to, I mean, I, I guess I like to lean towards evidence, but I, I I tend not to try to make up a script like oh she's just, why now she's just doing it because of this I I I try to shy away from doing that it's pretty deflating to the people that are coming forward and I have there's plenty of answers with the why now why why all of a sudden I think there's a lot of ways to explain that well that's the whole thing is that at a certain point especially if we're going way back you know when and you're talking about long before people would ever discuss this kind of stuff if you're just some Especially like a no name person that has like a big name, like a celebrity or politician, do that. Like, who is going to believe you back then? You know, like, who's going to be like, oh, yeah, you must be telling yeah, Bill You're Cosby touched me. Out. Like, yeah. no, no, Bill Cosby did not touch me. Yeah, and your career. Whoever. Whoever. Kevin Spacey, yeah, right. Well, see, yeah. so that, but the, the, okay, but that's the part that kind of bugs me about this whole thing. The part that bugs me about the whole thing is, um, so I've heard celebrities talk about particularly Bill Cosby, and they've talked about Kevin Spacey, too. And basically what they were saying was is that they all knew that was going on. The mm-hmm. Harvey Weinstein thing, everybody knew that was happening. So then... R- the, rumor mill stuff back then, though, right? No, they knew it was happening. Like, it, they, they, knew, they knew those things were happening, but nobody was just, like, doing anything about it, right? So, now, so we're talking about decades, right? I mean... M- well, maybe. Maybe, that, maybe what you're saying is true, so let's decades. Just, so let's yeah. just say that they had an inkling that it was happening. Yeah. I mean, wasn't it Seth MacFarlane? Didn't he make a joke about, about Kevin Spacey? No, yep. Harvey Weinstein at, at like the Oscars or something. Oh, like you that. joked about that. And then they had a, I don't know if he's just being funny, but he had a joke about Kevin Spacey in like yeah. a 2005 episode of Family Guy. Well, so, so I mean, and, and whatever, you know, I mean, like, again, it, so this is kind of the rough thing. You, I, I, I like what you said. I can't really dictate how a victim is going to feel or when they're going to react to this because, I mean, there's something to be said about, you know, kind of this residual trauma, you know, about coming through. And, and I always, I always uh, look to, um, you know, if you're really talking about hardcore PTSD, you know, when you're in the shit, you know, of, of like, let's say you, you're a soldier, right, fighting a war or something. This is, you can see this pretty well in Hurt Locker, that movie, right? Homeboy's over, like, taking apart bombs and shit and getting blown, seeing his buddies getting blown away and everything. And then he comes back and then he's sitting in the aisle looking at a package of Lucky Charms and he's like, what the fuck? And, you know, uh-huh. and that's when he's starting to notice PTSD setting in. So again, you can't, like, wait a minute. So it's kind of the same thing, you know? I mean, like, granted, going, getting sexually molested and going to war are two totally different things. What I'm saying is trauma has kind of a, a delayed reaction sometimes. And so we can't, 
it's it's hard to even get into that. It's so foggy to say forty years later. I mean, yeah, you can have your opinions about that, but who knows? It's it's just a stupid argument to be well, talking. And about. part of what Justin said, who's going to believe me? Well, right, yeah, at the time. You know, <laughs> well, I think yeah. there's I think there's who's going to believe me. But it, if I had to just guess how that would feel, like think about being sexually assaulted against your will, like you don't want it, but then also the process of talking about it and then being questioned about it and grilled about it would kind of make you relive it in a lot of ways. So I think yeah. there's also like a, uh, I'm just going to let it go kind of for my own sanity. I don't want to relive this and be accused. And yeah. So I, I think there's kind of the strength in numbers, like you're saying, enough people are talking about it. It's coming out. Some people that where it can bring it back up for them, but I think they're also just thinking maybe it is okay to talk about it, you know, well, especially now. And those things I think are fine. And, and again, um, in a lot of ways, I look at this and I say, okay, well, so if now standards of, of conduct are going to change for the better, when everybody kind of knew that these things were happening, and in the film industry, if it changes and everything, well, that's probably a good thing. I don't mm-hmm. think that's a bad thing, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, you shouldn't have to bone some executive to get a good role in a movie, right? That no. just seems, I mean, it should be based on merit and talent, not blowjobs, you know? But... Um, when they, uh, the, the part that I really don't like is how people who potentially did know and were, I'm not going to say they're complicit in it, like they were going along for it, you know, but, I, but I'm saying that they knew it was happening, they did nothing to stop it, and then now they're benefiting from it. Talk, so that's talk like show <clears throat> hosts, you know, like news anchors, people within the celebrity fields like that were doing this that knew these things were happening, were like, you know, and now they're, or polit- politicians, like the Roy Moore thing, you know. Or Al Franken. I mean, you tell me nobody knew that stuff was going on. People that legit knew and benefited by it. That yeah, that that's unacceptable. That, well, that, benefiting now. Benefiting remember the, now. By what it. about the Penn State thing? This was like years ago, but when I, th- I don't remember was yeah, was Sandusky the their defensive coordinator or something? Penn State's whatever. Uh, when Sandusky got caught and it came out, I mean, Joe Paterno, I guess, had known all along. Mm-hmm. And as well as everybody else on Penn State's, I, I guess the big wigs, they, they'd known all along. And, you know, Sandusky had a big enough name in uh, Penn State football that it kind of just got hush hushed. And, you know, however many more wins Penn State chalked up while they had that coaching staff in place that knew pedophilia was rampant and throughout. That's, yeah, that's, that's ugly stuff. Well, the, the, but the difference there is I think they had clear evidence that Paterno knew what was going on. Yeah, they did. Right. So, like, I mean, this, this, I, I, I think I've watched a couple of documentaries where, you know, um, there was, there was high level Catholic priests or whatever that kind of knew these things were going on with yeah. their, and they were moving the priests from different, you know, church to church and everything like going on. It was continuing that to Deliver happen. Us from Evil movie. Deliver Us from Evil is a great documentary yeah. about that. And they talk about, you know, there's, a, there's one in there. And then that movie Spotlight with, um, um, <clears throat> God, what, what, Michael Keaton. Mm. <clears throat> that dude's making a comeback, son. He I know. Yeah. Spider Man. He was cool in that too. <laughs> yeah, but he. But so this is what what bugs me about it is people profiting from like something like that. It, it, you know what it reminds me of? One thing that really just grinds my gears was when. Um, do you guys remember when Sandy Hook went down? Yeah. So there was a one of those little girls, which was awful. I mean, God, you can't even think of anything worse than that, right? A little five year old getting, getting blasted down, right? So there was a one of the uh, graduates from Ben Lomond, uh, Ben Lomond High School. One of his daughters were out there or something like that. And they held a benefit for him, right? And so what happened was is they in the in I think it was Ben Lomond's gym, they they had like um, all these vendors come and set up their kiosks and promote their product under the guise of all the proceeds go to, you know, the family and everything. But I was like yeah, but guess what? In the process, you're you're marketing, advertising, you're yeah. marketing your product on the on the gravestone of a five year old little girl. Ooh. Piece of shit. Like, give those people money anonymously and let them grieve. If you want to feel good about yourself, don't post this thoughts and prayers bullshit <laughs> and try to draw attention to you. <laughs> Just give them money anonymously and back off and let them do their thing. And you personally can feel good about what you've done, and that's all you need to do. So I hate it when people are profiting off this other stuff, right? Didn't, because, didn't Jessel Nick hit it spot on with that thoughts and prayers thing? Oh like, man. what good does your thoughts and prayers do? Like, well, absolutely it, well, nothing. Dude, I heard that in like in no. like in on CNN and Fox.
Fox News or something like that. People like thoughts and prayers. I was like, oh, you totally, you, you anchors ripped off Jesselneck, but you are not <laughs> funny when you do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially on the individual level. I mean, I guess everybody grieves in their own way, yada, yada, yada. But that, that's part of the one I have a hard time with. It's just immediately when you're on like Facebook and all that, it's just random people. Thoughts and prayers. I'm like, Dude, in three days, you're not going to give a shit. <laughs> you don't give a shit now, really. Yeah. But yeah, w- a lot like, of distractions, but don't about forget about how anymore. I feel. No one gives a shit about the Vegas Dude, shooting. It's, it's great when you yeah. like say thoughts and prayers, and then like your next your next post is, you know, ask Slackwater Pizza. You know, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> yeah. all, well, cool, yeah. getting drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, the other thing that I don't like that comes about this is it always the way that um, this stuff is portrayed. Uh, it, it's just so, like, uh, generalized in the way that it's said. So, like, Roy Moore, the Roy Moore thing, it was so funny because I was hearing, um, and, not, I mean, politics aside, Nancy Pelosi, she was obviously defending her crew. She was talking about, like, and I can't remember what anchor it was. It seemed like it was not Fox News because I don't think she'd go on Fox News, but probably, like, CNN or something like that. And the anchor was actually doing a pretty good job. And he was like, well, wait a minute, like, Bill Clinton was accused of like rape, like actual rape, you know, and and she's like, well, we're we're talking about a child molester here, and he's like, well, yeah, but Bill Clinton was accused of rape. She's like, well, why don't we talk about things moving forward? I'm like, well, no, 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 you're not even moving forward because you're defending Bill Clinton right now. You know what I mean? Like, so it was. Are you saying there's like a lack of willingness to expose it on all sides, or what do you mean? Yeah, like and there was uh, was it John Conyers, Al Franken. Like you, so this is Louis C.K. Yeah, this yeah. is where this is where some people are doing well, and then some people are really dropping the ball. Yeah, like, where there's just the acknowledge, like for example, Trump, like he wants to point out, well, the Democrats are doing this. Roy Moore, ah, oh, well, let's wait to see, you know, like this kind of thing. But I think there's Democrats doing that. Like, how long has that gone on where Bill Clinton was just like, hey, whatever, sweep it under the rug? It's oh, kind of yeah. chicken shit, yeah. man. Yeah. To well, say, yeah, well, well this will we, we'll let we'll leave this in the hands of the voters. Like, no, like you gotta okay. So this is the problem because well this is yeah it's plain that plain yeah. is safe. So this this is the problem when you think about it. You know who came the best to this? I don't know if you guys heard about what Ben Shapiro was talking about. Mm-mm. I feel like he kind of nailed it. Now he's kind of extreme because the dude super super conservative even and he's kind of talked about even his his sex life too. And he said he waited till he was married till he had sex right. And he was saying, well, who is it? Who Ben Shapiro? Ben Shapiro waited till he was married. Till he was married to okay. have sex. Yeah. And he's basically saying. So this is what needs to happen. We talked about this in a previous podcast, like raising your standards yeah. of sexual behaviors in order to protect yourself. Because what the other part that I don't like about this now is, so you talk about Roy Moore, right? And so Ben Shapiro was kind of talking about how these are pretty credible um, statements because not, I mean, there's there's kind of some evidence, not really. There's not like forensic evidence, obviously, but the stories are relatively the same. And so these women are coming forward, you know, this isn't, it doesn't sound, you know, awfully. And so you have to say, okay, well, they're, they're credible to the degree that, you know, this is what they are. And anytime you get accused of those things, I mean, it always spells trouble, right? And it's likely that dude's probably still going to get elected because it's freaking Alabama. Nobody's going <laughs> to elect a Democrat. Well, isn't, it, isn't a Democrat ahead right now? No, they're tied. But think about, <laughs> Which the, only thing I would, the only thing I would say about that was think about, like, Trump, dude. Like, Trump was dying in the polls. And then the election happened and killed it. Like yeah. so, I mean, he didn't win by a landslide, but there was obviously people not willing to say they were going to vote for Trump. Yeah. There's obviously people not willing to say they're going to vote for Roy Moore yeah. either. But, but the way that it's being painted is that he's a child molester. Okay, well, so so let's say he is. So he, you know, Ben Shapiro said, "Well, look, you you can't you can't." Um, and he's saying both parties are at fault here. The Republicans, you can't take the moral high ground on everything. But then when your guy does it, you can't say take the argument and say, look, you know what? At least he isn't a Democrat, so you better vote him in. You know what I mean? Like he's not going to vote for abortion, so you, you better better vote him in because that's you're now abandoning what what keeps your party whole, where we have the moral high ground. But Democrats, on the other hand, too, they're kind of saying, well, you know, we're very liberal and and very loose with our morals, and so you know, every everything goes. But when you do that, you kind of create an environment for something like that to happen, right? Because yeah. then it's kind of like saying, okay, where does where does um, my my exercise of my full sexuality begin and sexual harassment and abuse end? I don't yeah. know where those the, the you know where do those cross paths? Where's whatever? And so this, I think, guys, when I'm teaching groups, what I've heard from my clients is is like the, it always starts to ruffle feathers because now they're like, well, shit, what? 
what is sexual abuse and what is not. Like, I don't know. Like, you're telling me if I ask a girl if she if I want to buy her a drink, that's sexual harassment, you know. And there's like a girl on on line or or on some show said, "Yep, that's sexual harassment." I have no reason. You can't even ask me for. I'm like, what? How is that possible? How is that sexual yeah. harassment? You know. So now we're blurring the lines and saying. Well, yeah, we do need to have standards. They don't need to be ridiculous standards, but we do need to have standards. So I like because Ben Shapiro was kind of, again, like he's saying, wait till you're married. Eh, it's unrealistic, you know. You're just not going to get there. I agree with what he's saying, and I, I applaud him for taking the efforts to get where he is. But I just can see general public doing that. You know what I mean? So I mean, you're like now you're in a spot where you, they're starting to throw these big words out there like child molester and pedophile and all this other stuff, and it's those are poorly defined um, representations of what is actually happening here. I mean, I don't know if... Yeah, well, it, it doesn't give an accurate picture. And if we're talking, again, about the confusion that comes from, well, what is a sexually abusive behavior now? You know, I think... And again, I, I need to read more up on, on the details of it, but Louis C.K. got in trouble for basically like jerking off in front of people. I don't know. He, I, I guess he asked them, hey, can I masturbate in front of you? And they'd say, yes, I guess this is my limited the understanding. The one who came forward it. said no, though. And then he blocked the so door. So she said no. Well, that, and, and, he blocked the door and masturbated. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, well, that's well, then there's clearly a, wrong. Yeah, the other part, too, is you would <laughs> yeah. have, say, for example, I'm throwing out a hypothetical scenario because I don't know the, all the details, but say, for example, it's somebody working on one of his shows or something that's not a big name. Hey, can I masturbate in front of you? There's kind of like that, well, if I tell him no... Am I going to lose my job? You know, kind of like the power imbalance. So do I say yes because I don't want something bad to happen? I don't want to lose my job or I don't want to be, you know, have my name marked. Well, that, but, then, but then it's, and it's uh, the flip side is, well, if the person said yes, then how does the other person not know, you know, they didn't have the go ahead? So that, that, that's that power. Imbalance that's where it gets is, that weird. That power imbalance is huge, though. So yeah. if you think about, um, you know. Again, so we, I don't know if we defined this in a previous, no, we did. We talked about this in the consent standards is saying that, so abuse is defined by a power imbalance and then one person taking advantage of that power yeah. imbalance to benefit them at the harm of another person. Well, I mean, part of this is if you don't recognize that, I mean, like, <laughs> so we, you can have that argument, but then you kind of, you kind of have to step back and say, yeah, well, wait a minute. I mean, I'm asking somebody if I can jerk <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, well, that's, you know, that's, and that's the difference, like. If he if he was interested in someone, he approached him. Hey, can we go out sometime? As opposed to, hey, can I jerk off in front of you? Yeah, that's yeah. that's a little bit of a. I mean, reach. imagine <laughs> if if just like your buddy, like if one of you guys, if we we're doing this podcast and it was like, hey, do you guys mind if I jerk off a little bit? I'm like, fuck, I guess yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird, but all right. Yeah. Well, the, the this is the thing though that I I I just don't. To me, we have a ton of guys who are in like so. Um, for those of you who don't know, any listeners like so in Utah. We have basically three different groups of, of clients. Um, well, actually, I guess I guess there's four in terms of uh, their conditions. So we have like Group A conditions, and this would be clients who committed a sexual offense um, after the age of 18 against a person who was younger than 18. That clearly defined that, right? Yeah. About there. Uh, group B conditions, where this was an adult to an adult. And then Group C conditions, and Group C conditions are kind of very particular. In my understanding of it is... The, the ideal candidate for group C conditions would be uh, early to mid-20s sleeping with what would be um, a 15 or a 16-year-old, right? Somewhere around there, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then there's some folks on the fourth category that just don't have any conditions at all. They kind of have some weird probation agreements with the judge, and they're kind of on these other things. But this whole group A conditions, it starts to lump a lot of guys into this group A conditions, and they just kind of do this umbrella effect of pedophiles, Right. But there's um, there's a documentary about this. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's that are are all men pedophiles? Have you? Have you I haven't seen it. I've heard of it. Thought. So it's it's kind of a. I, I think so. I saw it on Netflix, and when I saw it on Netflix, it got like one star. It shouldn't have got one star. Part of it was the the narrator has an awful fucking voice. I mean, it's really hard to listen to. <laughs> And then, and then, secondly, um, I think though? just the name of it. I think the name of it. Um, is, is obviously provocative, but it didn't... And so people who were like, you know, Sundance film critics probably loved it, but the general layperson looking at that was like, you know, it almost as if they're trying to justify it. I think their argument kind of fell short, but they, they mentioned in there, like, um, 
I don't know if you guys know the answer to this, but what's the number one search term if I was on a, like a porn site? Teen. Teen, teen sex yeah. is the most searched form of, of sex on the internet, right? So one of the things that they say in that documentary, which is kind of interesting, is they say the the age at which you find people sexually attractive doesn't change. It right. expands over time, <clears throat> right? So like I always pose this question to... So if you're a therapist, this is this is the way you can kind of approach this with your group members. <clears throat> the idea that sexuality doesn't change, it expands, right? So like if you look back, when did you first become interested in girls? 12 or 13. Jeez, early. Damn. Is dude. that? Girls are gross. Isn't that seventh <laughs> grade? I'm kidding. No, yeah. that's when I, I thought they were pretty hot too. When, when did you <laughs> thought? Yeah. Probably earlier than that. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Well, I guess it depends on like interested or like sexually interested yeah i didn't start thinking about girls sexually at least until six or seven yeah grade. it had to be about middle school yeah elementary so. i couldn't stand girls yeah. yeah so okay so and um so let's say i'm not gonna ask you guys when you lost your virginity i mean you can say whatever let's say all three of us lost our virginity when we were 16 years old right and let's say that's a fond sexual memory right so if you think about um when you when you ask a client about what's a healthy sexual fantasy, I mean, what's what's the real answer to that? Not the whole. Well, oh, I met, like, I, which which answer? Yeah, I met her in a meadow, and we talked for a few years, and then she consented fully. Like, I mean, what what's a real healthy sexual fantasy? Ideally, uh, I, I was uh, I was hooking up with some girl, taking her from behind. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> No, I usually so, the end. <laughs> so, if I've previously engaged in in consensual sexual encounters with an adult or somebody my same age, I mean that, <laughs> and I'm playing it back like a highlight reel, like an ESPN highlight reel. Then that's a healthy sexual fantasy, right? Typically, that's you know, some people call that their spank bank or whatever. So that's what people that's what they are, right? Think about this though. Okay, so if I have fond sexual memories of of having sex when I was 16 years old with another person, and now I'm like 30 or something. And then I'm, you know, so I'm masturbating to that, and I, and that thought starts to creep in. I think of myself as a 16 year old having sex with another 16 year old. Technically, I'm masturbating to a 16 year old. Is that an unhealthy sexual fantasy? No. No. Why not? <clears throat> well, what well, you're, you're reflecting back on your memory. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Of something uh, that I did. What, that was age appropriate at the time. Consensual at the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the. So the other thing I say is, well, think about it in terms of like ice cream, okay? So if you had to guess the type of ice cream when you were very young and your parents first gave you ice cream, very first, what flavor do you think it was? Vanilla. Probably chocolate or vanilla. Most of us are chocolate. But I mean, what's your favorite flavor now? Mint chip. What's yours? Wow. How technical are we getting? Really technical. Mint chocolate chip cookie. There you go. Well, all right, yeah. never getting into it. Then yeah. Ben and Jerry Tonight Dough. It's Jimmy Fallon's brand. It's really good. It is good. Yeah, yeah it's so good. So I like chocolate chip cookie dough. Like right. that's my favorite. Right. Okay. Now, but but do you still like vanilla? Yeah. Of course you do. <clears throat> but I mean, like, okay. So if you put chocolate chip cookie dough and vanilla in front of me, I will always pick the chocolate chip cookie dough. But that yep. doesn't mean that I don't like vanilla. And so the same thing like that. Your sexual preference when you first define it is very, you know, what it is. And then it, it you start to develop texture over time in your sexual preferences. <laughs> and then it goes on from there. So texture. I, well, yeah. I mean, my taste expands. My texture expands. You know, I, I, I get a different flavor of these things. My taste, the reason, same the reason why I like ice cream. If I have a very sensitive palate when I'm a young kid, and it's not very expanded. Well, vanilla is great. And over time, I can't even, maybe, maybe I don't even have the chompers to handle that cookie dough. But as I get older, I like that texture, and I like the different flavors, and I can handle it. So you're you're posing some weird shit right now that I agree with you on, by the way. But yeah. you're you're I'm not posing it. I'm, I'm yours. Well, you're suggesting you're yeah. suggesting <laughs> that based on this, our all men pedophiles documentary plus our own work that there is a range of behaviors that when when we reflect back on them aren't necessarily inappropriate to act on them now though is where that line's crossed. Well, you don't you have no interest on having sex with a 16-year-old, do no. you? No. No. No, yeah. So no no interest on that. Um because you're so what's happened is is your sexual palate has advanced and developed over time and you've had reinforcement over time for that as well. 
because you've been able to generate relationships and sexual relationships over time with people your same age or older, correct? Yeah. Okay. So again, so again, if I've never ever had anything but vanilla, vanilla is great. Vanilla is awesome, right? But if but I if I'm allowed to expand and I'm allowed for my sexual palate to expand and, and experience different things, that's where. Be, so the, the, when they premise that, they kind of were saying, well. Pedophiles also find children under the age of, of 18 sexually attractive, you know? So is everybody a pedophile? No, not everybody's a pedophile because the, the, the most confusing factor of all of this, I think, is when it comes to the legal age of consent, which we talked about. But because that really blurs the definition of pedophilia. Because, like, the legal age at which a person is legally able to consent varies from country to country. So, like, for example, in Yemen, the legal age is nine years old. Fucking nine years old, right? But then if you get to a, a, a country like Tunisia, it's 20. So you got to be 20 to be able to do that. And even in the United States, most of the states, with the exception of two, is, is 16. There's two of them that are 17, Wisconsin and New York. So technically, I could, I could just cross state lines and be committing a sexual offense if I'm going into another state. Right. But if all I've ever known was Utah's sexual consent standards, which the age of consent in Utah is 16, right? And so, and 16 to 17 is totally legit. So if I'm 17 and, and having sex with my 16-year-old girlfriend, I'm fine, right? But then I go to Wisconsin, I do that same thing. Now I'm hit. I might be getting charged with a sexual offense at that point because now I'm breaking the law because the legal age of consent in Wisconsin is 17. Well, how am I to know that? Am I going to get there and look up the age of consent laws or am I going to go by where I was raised, right? So it's, it's, it's confusing. I'm not offering an excuse. I'm giving context as to mm-hmm. why somebody might fall into that. That's not the definition of a pedophile at that point. Right. Like that starts to be... I mean, there, there's places like Saudi Arabia and Amman. They don't even have a legal age of consent. It's like whatever. You know what I mean? I mean, I've had more than one client just from Mexico that like from Mexico came here with the same culture they grew up in and ended up catching a charge with 14 year old, 13 year old and something that back home would have been just fine with maybe parental consent is a first degree felony here. Yeah. You know, and again, we in, I guess it's nationwide. I'll, I'll speak at least for sure for Utah, 13 and under is considered a child. And so that's not the case, just, you know, 1,500 miles south of here. Super confusing. End up end up with guys in treatment that, you know, they get the group A stipulations that you were talking about earlier. You know, they get treated and called pedophiles and maybe understood by most of society as being pedophiles, yet their attraction really isn't all that abnormal. You know, uh, both of those guys ended up going on to have adult relationships yeah. with, with females, but they're yeah. charged. Yeah. You know? Well, and just how have the laws changed within Utah, within s- certain people's lifetimes, you know, as far as what would have been okay when they were a teenager versus what is not okay now. I mean, even that's changed. If By you're in the same, shot. if you're in the same location, it changes. Yeah. Well, well, so the pedophilia, the way that it's talked about acts like it's a, it acts like it's a behavior, right? This is a this is a a behavior, and it's not, and this is kind of controversial. As opposed to what? As as opposed to like an orientation. Orient. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. Now I know that's kind of controversial. I mean, more on that in a minute. But so, okay, let me give you an example. There was a guy I, that we worked. You. There was a guy that we worked with, um, and I think he was from Sierra Leone. He was a refugee from Sierra Leone, and he met. So there's a. If there's a, a refugee center down in Salt Lake City where he met um, a girl who was also from Sierra Leone, and she was 15, and he was 25, I think. Over there, okay, perfectly legal, totally legal that those two are having sex. I think the age of consent, I could be wrong. I could be wrong about his country, but the age of consent wherever he was from, we're going to call it Sierra Leone, was 14, Okay, legally speaking, but they kind of do whatever they want. I mean, people get their heads chopped off and shit. So, so he comes over here and he meets this girl at a refugee center. Homeboy doesn't speak English. I mean, she doesn't speak English. They both speak, I think, French or something, right? Whatever they speak. Sounds good. Yeah. And unbeknownst to them or anything that's going on, they develop a sexual relationship. Well, Part of the refugee is they go to counseling because they're trying to integrate into the American culture. 
So then she discloses that she's having a sexual relationship with him, who's also the refugee center. Now guess what the, the therapist, the American therapist, has to do? Oh, wow. I got to report that. Okay, now, <laughs> so is that guy a pedophile? Or is that is that guy a product of his culture? And where Because, again, if I've never known anything different and where I'm coming from, that's perfectly legal. And everybody does that there for a variety of reasons. Why, and he kind of talked about this. He said, well... You know, a lot of people have AIDS. People die. Um, you know, the lifespan is not as much. And he's all, and, and he kind of said that he's all, it's not as bad as everybody thinks it is, but it kind of, when you're a kid, that's kind of what you're talked about. So if you're going to have children and stuff, it's kind of early on and things like that. And, um, and so I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know if I can like blame you that you had deviant sexuality when that was kind of your cultural norm of the time, right? Because it gets complicated. Uh, it, it almost, by definition, makes it not deviant, but it's at odds with our laws, so he gets convicted. You know, I, I kind of wonder if there was like a way to, to illustrate this with, if you, if you took a 16-year-old fully developed female Stripped away any identifying information about her, so there's no way to tell that she was 16, just appearance alone. There's a good chunk of the heterosexual male population that would go for somebody that looked that way. It's it's when you add all the characteristics that make her 16. You know, she's a junior in high school. She, like, doesn't know shit about life. She's 16. You know, uh, the, the things that she might be interested in, that all of a sudden she's clearly not a woman. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's, well, I think, I think that's, but, but I think that's where people go, like go astray is that by and large, a, a 16 year old is a sexually mature person that's able to reproduce. No, that's, that's years ago. Yeah. That's legit. Right. That's not, see that this is, this is kind of the fascinating thing too, because this is where I think anybody who's talking about this inappropriately does a disservice to first of all, people who aren't actually pedophiles, but then people who are actually pedophiles, right? Because because then it, it starts to it starts to cause a lot of problems. Because everything that we know about this right now is always after the fact. I mean, when when how often do you think a guy comes in and says, "Man, I'm having sexual fantasies about children, and I really need some help." Never. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but it doesn't hardly ever happen. And so what I'm saying is, is we're creating we're creating an environment in which People aren't going to want to do that, and we rely on the criminal justice system to intervene after a whole bunch of people are already hurt. So my my appeal to that is is like, look, if you talk about it in a manner that you're talking about it, you're not doing anybody any good. Because what you're talking like, I mean, if you think about pedophilia, right? There's definitely a difference between the general public term of this and then the clinical, like professional definition. Of course, because everybody, the average citizen, will just usually associate a pedophile with a person who demonstrates sexual behavior with somebody under the age of 18. Simple. Pretty right? much, right? Yeah, yeah. But clinical term, so I even wrote it down here, a sexual preference for children, usually, usually a prepubertal or early of pubertal, pubertal age. For six months or more, the person has acted on these urges. That's an important part. Or suffers distress as a result of having these feelings. Some ego dystonic. This person has to be at least 16 years of age and at least five years older than the person they have sexually acted upon to meet the criteria for a pedophile. So 16 and 11 right. could be. right. And then there's there's also kind of the exclusive versus uh, non-exclusive mm. pedophiles, which is what? Exclusive would be they're only aroused to children. Uh, non-exclusive means they're aroused to children, but they also might be aroused to adults as well. Right. So so there's subcategories of these these uh, philias or whatnot because they're not... Heba, Ebe... <clears throat> Those ones, the hepatophilia. Well, you also like zero to three. That's an infantophilia. Yeah. Um, the y- less than thirteen years of age or prepubertal. Uh, it, that's a pedophile. And then a child and adolescent. That's called a hebophilia. The aphibophilia is kind of weird because then it's just like that's like a seventeen-year-old, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what the hell are you talking about at that point? But pedophile is the only term used by the media. That's all they use, right? So even like this whole thing with Roy Moore, he's a pedophile. Well, I don't know. Kind of more like this is the hebophilia type yeah. stuff that we're talking about, right? Child molester, eh, I don't know. You, that's not a child is 13 and younger, right? Like That's what we're talking about. Now, I'm not trying to take away from what he did. What he did was awful. I'm not trying to take away from it's just, But it's, it's, the wrong, it's the wrong descriptor. It, 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 it confuses and clouds what we're actually talking about. We have to be clear in our definitions of what a pedophile is versus a hebophile versus what's normal sexual attraction. 
versus what's normal sexual attraction that's socially sanctioned because of what we know about developmental level. Those are all different well, categories. Right. Be- because the, this is, okay, because each one of those terms, and I, I hate to get into semantic traps. I hate that more than anything. You know what I mean? But we this have is, to define it, though. Well, this is a technical term no. that's really important because, okay, if I have a legit person who has a who has pedophilic interest in deviant arousal that they want to work on, okay, great. There's a set of treatment standards that I'm going to apply to that claim, right? Okay, well, then what if I get, like, an early 20s guy who had sex with a 16-year-old that lied about her age and said she was 18? So I do the exact same standards no, for that guy? No different, way. Different treatment plan. Well, right, exactly. So if I'm treating everybody as a pedophile then I'm not doing a good service to anybody. No. And I start to cloud this. And that's, so there's a problem there, I think, when you, when you lump everybody in the same category. That's, that's, I mean, that's what I'm trying to appeal to folks if you're talking about this in that way, particularly anybody in the media. I mean, just do a little bit of research. It's not that hard. This is not really that difficult. I think really making sure that you nail it when you're talking about this is important. And educating the public, too. You know, if, if God forbid any of us knew um, a nephew or we had a brother or something like that that in their early 20s had sex with a 16-year-old and got hit with a sexual offense, man, you don't think that dude's a pedophile. You just don't. And he's not, for that matter, right? Was he a poor decision? Absolutely. He should have been way more careful about who he's having sex with and vetted that person and been way better about his personal sexual standards. And we can talk about all that. But saying he's a pedophile? I don't know, man. That's tough. It's the same kind of thing when... I don't know, like early on in my, I guess, clinical career, the the main motivation for sexual offending was power and control, which is present. But like the, I, I think that, that power and control was assumed to be the underlying motivational force behind all sexual offending, at least, you know, early on when I was taught. And that, that creates a problem as well. You know, it, it, like I, I think that mindset was kind of based on this idea of like the, the patriarchy suppressing – people it's a there's power dynamics everything's a power play and certainly in like some types of rape or other sexually abusive behavior power and control is a legitimate thing but if you start to look at every problem like a nail you're gonna your solution is gonna always be a hammer right Mm. like power and control is a Cert, it's a motivator for certain types of crimes with certain clients but it certainly certainly doesn't encompass everybody just like pedophilic attraction doesn't explain every sexual encounter with a with somebody under the age of 18 there's a lot of other motivations a lot of other lifestyle factors present and therefore the treatment approach that we as treatment providers uh provide is 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 going to be is going to be dependent upon what it is we're looking at it's it, it you can't just paint everything i guess with a big broad brush stroke yeah well which is a big part of what's going on right now and that's it's especially difficult when you tie politics into it so for so for example if you say looking at um al franken for one by no means is what happened okay it's not okay you have to be aware you can't treat people like that and it's going to come out somewhere but there's absolutely no way that you can say well exactly what he did is the same thing as what harvey weinstein did like no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> what, right. what, did, what did Al Franken do? So if, as far as what I know yeah. now, there was what he, so there was a picture of him. He was overseas doing some tour stuff during the war, and like there was a female sleeping. He was like grab, acting like he was going to grab her, took a picture of that. But then, oh, yeah. right. So there, there was, was a, there, well, there was more. Yeah. Yeah. So so either way, not okay Still not on Weinstein's level. Yeah, before, not okay. before that, I think there was, she mentioned that, he like they, forced they were, a kiss on yeah, her. They, yeah, they were going to practice a kiss as part of the act because they were there for the USO show. Oh, and he like made her kiss him or something. Yeah, or, she said yeah. he rammed his that's right tongue down her throat or something like that. And then he grabbed her breast while she was sleeping. And other people have come that's forward right. and they grabbed it. He grabbed her butt. Yeah, and all this other stuff. Yeah. But I didn't mean to cut yeah. your point on. Oh, no, yeah, no. But saying. no, I like what you're saying. It's not the same thing yeah. like, at all. Yeah, like across the board, they're both bad. And the fact that it's being addressed is a good thing. But it's just like you were saying, it jumps to like pedophile and predator and um, child molester. Okay, some of that will be valid, but you can't lump everybody together too. Because part of the thing I look at would be, let's just say on the side of maybe there is someone that really does recognize, hey, I've got an issue, something's going on, I've got a problem, and they're not a quote-unquote pedophile. 
they're going to be worried that that's going to be the stigma. Well, if I talk about this, if I tell my wife about this, or if I told my friends, they're going to just going to think yeah. I'm a pedophile, I'm a creep, and right. You know, so, the environment that we've created is not friendly for people coming forward to talk. Not about at all. Things. Well, a, a big part of one of my groups actually did really well with this. I brought this up because I'm just thinking in my head, these guys got to be thinking this is in a sense, kind of highlighting some of the things they've been through. And and I don't think it's the appropriate time necessarily, but part of my thoughts were what's gone on in our society? What, how have we treated, you know, young men, boys and, and, and adults on how to handle things? How have we dehumanized men in a lot of ways that has led into this problem? And I get that. I'm not saying that at all. It's like, a, oh, who cares about the victims? Obviously, that's primary. I'm saying once we get around to that conversation as far as what's gone on, why is this so rampant now that it's coming out, is I think a large part of it is how guys do get human, dehumanized mm-hmm. emotionally. Mm-hmm. You know, Kind of like the whole going back to the stereotype of like, suck it up, don't be a bitch, don't be a pussy. Mm-hmm. But that whole idea that as a male, it's generally accepted, or I should say not accepted, that you're going to talk about your emotions. You're going to talk about what you're struggling yeah. with. So we suck it up. It just bottles up and it bottles up. And then there's just sideways, really shitty ways that it comes out. Yeah, well, and like I said, have... that's 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 probably not the discussion to have right now. But well, eventually we'd want to have that no, as I, part of this. Well, no, I like what you're saying because that's – the so I think in the um, – I know a future podcast, one of the – I think it's called Masculinity Traps that we run into. And I'm, I mean, I'm – so – I, I think you're right. Like the way that this is looked at, be, and you can you can see this pretty clear cut in a lot of different circumstances. Like when it comes to those things, because uh, you, the way, and I and I think you're fine talking about it to the clients because, again, I think you're taking the wrong approach if you approach this and say, "Well, think about it from the big victim's perspective." Well, unfortunately, I'm not running a victim group here, okay? I'm not Mm. working with victims here. And I'm not saying that they don't need their help. Of course they do. What I'm trying to do is have these guys not offend again. So I need to frame this in a perspective and asking them, okay, well, well, okay, how are you even capable of doing these things, right? Because do you guys ever get the argument? Because what I mean, what you're talking about is, so I'm going to justify my bad behavior by pointing out other people's yeah. bad behavior, right? Do you ever get the argument that, well, like, well, back in the ancient Greek times, they had, you know, <laughs> of they, course, they had sure, sex boys all the, all the time. time, right? How do you yeah. guys respond to that usually? So, well, like, one one that I'll often get, it, 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 it's not even pointing back to ancient Greek, they'll say, well, in other cultures, uh, you know, like a 14 year old boy, could consent, you know, they, they're, they're able to give consent and a client of mine actually, it, he, he had this rebuttal. He says they go in P, all the time in prison, you know, never in therapy group, but back in the section, a lot of the guys that were convicted would get talking about it and say how unfair it was that the United States were not as enlightened as other countries. And they lower the standards because this and that. <laughs> enlightened. Yeah, I know. I know. And he, he, he said something to the effect of, okay, let Let's imagine for an, for a moment that there's a 14 year old that's precocious enough and well and like well adjusted enough and mature enough that they could actually consent to sexual activity with a 45 year old man. Yeah, you know, like let's say that that boy exists somewhere just to humor you. Say so, the thing is, is you won't know if he's able to handle uh, the the effects of sex until after you've already done it to see how he deals with it. So you're gambling that this young man is, is going to be mature enough to be able to handle uh, a sexual encounter. You're gambling enough to be able to have sex with a person to see how, it, how if it works out for them or not. Well, and, you won't even know, you won't even know, Maybe for years afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's like the next morning. Oh, he seems fine, good to go. No, yeah, yeah. You don't know until years after. That's what we're seeing That's, with all these people yeah. coming forth in Hollywood. Dude, I had years a, and years down yeah, the line. I had a so client. It, it, I, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, and this is again. I just want to. This is his take on it. I'm stealing it from him. I told him I was going to steal it from him. Yeah, and he, he said that. Like, how many people do you have to victimize until you find that lovely 14 year old that can consent to these things? Like, you, yeah. until you can find the person that's actually not damaged, you've created a wake of hell behind you. Well, so and, it's, and it's you don't, and you never really know it. I think, so what are you going to do? Do a longitudinal study on it? I mean, right. You know what I mean? Plus, I think, so I had like a, a client who had one of those. I mean, pardon the cliche, but he had like a breakthrough moment, you know? He was in group talking to me about, so he's a 40-year-old man now talking to me in group. May, no, or late 40s, actually, talking to me, and he's saying, 
<clears throat> well, yeah, when I was when I was fourteen, I had sex with a twenty five year old lady, and it was you know one of the greatest things in my life. I don't think it messed me up. But I'm like, so he's talking to me in a sex offender group about, and then he's like, wait a minute, he like caught himself. He's oh, like, really? Yeah. And then he's like, I can't believe I'm saying that right now. Like, you know, he's all, and then and then he started to kind of look at, and then he caught himself and started to say how that skewed his uh, his understanding of sexuality and sex altogether, and it started leading him down <laughs> a lot of promiscuous roads. That dude, that is what I try to tell people that, like. I guess justify the the so called sexy twenty five year old female teacher that has with a young man. I, I try to. I, I didn't know like. I would just kind of presuppose that it would skew their ideas about sex and sexuality. You've actually seen it happen. You've actually seen a well, client ha- come to well, that conclusion. Well, you can't help but. I mean, so this is what I this is what I believe is that whatever a child. So in terms of my development, right, as far as a child goes. Whatever their first exposure is to any given thing, they're going to measure every exposure thereafter against that first exposure. Going back to the vanilla, right? Okay, obviously. So imagine if my very first exposure to sex was porn. I have to measure every... I thought you were going to say Rocky Road. (laughs) Every future sexual interaction against pornography. Which is going to be a skewed version because now I'm looking through the lens of pornography. And I mean, this is why sometimes there, I mean, there's some really good books out there for kids. Um, if you're a parent, there's one called It's Not the Stork and there's one called It's Perfectly Normal. And oh, it, <laughs> they have yeah. funny pictures in yeah, them. But as, as a parent, you want, you want to be frank with your kids about this, like, not in a joking way and, and anything like that because. Again, you want them to have the knowledge base, not this being a secret, you know, because it's such a weird message we send kids. We're like, this is entirely private, and this is the most important thing, but we're not ever going to talk about yeah. it. Like, think about that. Like, I, that's like giving that's, weird that's like giving somebody a box that says, now there's a secret in this box, and it's the most important thing in your life, but you never get to know what it is. Don't open it, okay? See ya. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, then, well, then you think about too. Yeah, so, so. On the stereotype for males, then where do they learn it? Yeah, pornography, Porn, yeah. movies, music, which sends an extremely clear message of you pursue, no means try harder. Yeah. You know, yeah. If and I just it, pull my cool. dick out. Yeah, and it's yeah. cool that you tell your buddies about it. It's hilarious and it's funny and it's cool. Yeah, just like you said, like we have things of like kids now with tablets, all this stuff, watching porn at like eight and nine years old. Like yeah, porn. So that's their yeah. first experience, and then their first experience with a human being is some timid fifteen-year-old girl they're on a date with, and they've got this expectation that pornography is created about this is how it's going to be, this is how she's going to look, she's this is how she's going to no, perform, yeah. she's, she, yeah. she's going to do this, you're going to do this. Uh, Oh man! Well, there, I feel bad and for there's kids. an argument. There's a there's an argument. That argument that you hear from our clients, you know, about well, in the Stone Age and the Greek times is perfectly normal. Here's the thing. I think you just validate that to a degree, okay? Because when you validate that, then you can deconstruct it. Because if you throw it out completely and say, "Well, that's an erroneous argument," well, then we can't have a conversation about it. Because, okay, well, let's ask ourselves why that was the case, right? Well, lifetime life in the Stone Age was tough. It was not an easy time, right? If you think about the lifespan back then, it's probably like 30 years old, right? I see where you're going with this. Obviously, getting it while the getting was good was the order of the day, right? And those folks, they didn't Sex have... Sex was survival then. Well, right. We had to so reproduce real early. We talked about that earlier in triggers. Like, my limbic system has evolutionarily and biologically been hardwired to think of sex as a survival mechanism, okay? It's not now. It, it's, it's one of those asterisk things next to it, right? I don't need it now to survive. Human beings don't need sex to survive now. Well, newsflash, right? But the, the, those folks back then, they didn't have the luxury of waiting to have babies. Like yeah. and all those anthropological studies, and I don't know how they ever do that, but they show that males became sexually attracted to females that were 16 years of age primarily because that person was was the one who could bear the most children within the lifespan, was a 16-year-old. So if you hit it too early, 13 years old, hit it, it's probably a bad phrase, but <laughs> right? So if you if you had sex with somebody who was 13 years old too early, um, there's a lot of risk for both of them dying Mother and everything. Death, yeah. right? so, so they stayed away from that. So natural selection took its course, and over time, 
like that that came to that. Then females could produce the most offspring, so that was your target mate. And you could make the that, that this is now a biological preference for this, okay? But things are obviously different now. So that's that's the idea there. It's kind of like when people say, yeah, weed helps my anxiety more than Xanax, and Xanax is worse for my body than weed is, so therefore I should smoke weed. And I'm like, great argument. It's illegal in Utah. Figure it out. It, right. you, like your argument has some merit, but times are different, and the place is different. So if you think about it from like 5,000 BC to about 1500, right, 1500 AD, that's a long ass time. The average age of pregnancy was still about 13 years old. It was flat for that amount of time. That's a, that's a ton of time. That's 6,500 years. So not until 1500s did you start to see a sharp incline. I, I, at, I was going to say, and I, it's prehistory, but I think it would be fair to assume that you know, the 6,000 years to the previous 150,000 years, it was probably a similar trajectory. You know, we don't know because it was prehistory. But right. yeah, chances are that all up until the last 500 years has it been this way. Right. It's now it's now between 21 and 23 is the average age of pregnancy yeah. now. And that's a lot of that you have to show is because the lifespan of human beings has drastically improved. Well, look, because of because of modern agriculture and the Renaissance and the Industrial Revolution, now now like human beings can be actualized more so than just uh, reproduction machines. There's and, and so we can acknowledge that it's probably not good for a 14 year old to get pregnant. You know, yeah, and let, for a variety of reasons. For a variety of reasons, let, let's allow her to or him. You know, as far as like being saddled with the responsibility of getting someone pregnant to develop into a young adult and actualize their potential. Yeah. But why 18? Why is 18 the magical? I don't know. Why do you know? I might. I don't know. Have you guys thought about that? I have no other idea. Other than just we tie it into other things that we say that 18 is okay. You mean just across the board like so, an adult? I think so, well, are you out of school? Well, you out of school? Well, the question is, the question you have to ask yourself is, okay, why have we given that number significance, right? Because what we do know is that the human brain doesn't develop till what? Age? 25. About 25 years old. I mean, if you're going to make the real argument. Consent. The, the Ben Shapiro <laughs> argument, it would be consent is legal at age 25. Oh, because then geez. I have my mental wherewithal that I can actually make that decision, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be frank about it, and we're not trying to blur lines, that's the line to be drawn. 25 years old. Yeah. It's not going to happen, clearly. So you say, okay, well then... Why is 18 the magic number? Well, girls physically mature at age 16, right? So think about this. The way you describe a 13-year-old girl, if you, if I asked you, I don't know if you guys have nieces and nephews, but the way you talk about, and you can catch yourself doing this and other people listening to this, just pay attention. Think about the way people talk about 13-year-old girls. She's a cute little girl. Yeah. 16-year-old. She's an attractive young lady. You're right. We talk about that. There's things that we notice distinctly about females. So their physical appearance in terms of their breasts, obviously. Their hips, that's another obvious one. But also their face. And one thing that we don't pay attention to is their hair. Uh, Yeah, their hair. If you look at the differences between a 16-year-old's hair and a 13-year-old's hair, drastic differences. All of which are biological indicators that that person is sexually matured. I, I get that hair quality is an indicator of reproductive maturity, but like, what's the difference between like a 16 year old's hair and a 13 year old's hair? I don't know. So I don't honestly know. That's shinier and more lustrous. Maybe right. it's just one of those indicators that that we can pay attention to. And so what we do is we start to. Again, all things being equal, if we just did not know this person's age and they were walking in front of us and they were and they were dressing the part, we might mistake that person for being of age. Right. I mean, it's perfectly uh-huh. reasonable. And that doesn't make you a pervert for doing so. Because, again, that 16-year-old girl is now physically sexually mature. Now, I'm not suggesting you have sex with 16-year-olds. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just saying that that's when people start noticing. Well, guys, this is kind of the weird thing. Evolutionarily, guys don't physically mature till they're 18. And the reason why is because girls, way back in the day, wanted a guy who was taller and stronger. So again, natural selection took its course, and males, the females targeted males who were taller and stronger, and then those males were naturally more able to target the females who were of of, childbearing ages. So the other ones who were younger just kind of died off. So now... We get this extra two years of, of time for me to develop physically, 
which gives me an ability to be taller and stronger, which is attractive to mate. But so it's, cent- it's centered around male development, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So men started to reach the age of physical maturity around age, age eighteen, gave them two additional years to grow. But this, ad- but that, those additional two years, they came at a price because you had to trade energy for physical growth for mental growth. So guys, mentally and emotionally, we don't mature as quickly as girls. So. In that respect, girls who are 16 are going to want to date guys who are older than them. They target guys who are older than them because of that biological trait there. Girls want to date – girls don't want to hang out with other 16-year-old dudes because they're fucking goofballs. You know what I mean? They're boys, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're dorks, you know? They want to hang out with dudes because at that point they're dudes. all yeah. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Sorry, older adult, dudes, adult males, yeah, <laughs> college dudes. dudes, right? So that <laughs> translates full circle nowadays. I mean, sixteen-year-old girls are both physically and mentally more mature than males their same age, and they're not as sexually as attracted. And and you see that a lot. I mean, the average woman is younger than than her male partner. You see that a lot. I mean, our, our, with the three <clears> of us, yeah, Mike. Um. My parents, my parents, my dad was older than my mom. Is your dad older than your mom? Yep. Your dad older than your mom? Used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah. older than your wife? Yeah. Yeah, me yeah. too. So, oh, yeah, it's definitely the average. Yeah. Or, but far beyond the average. So if you had to guess, what do you think percentage-wise couples in the, we'll say, United States? Percentage-wise where, where the male's older than the female. Oh, dude, 90%. I think so. At least. Yeah. At least. Yeah, that's not, I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. Yeah. No, I'd agree. Do you have the stats in front of you? No, oh. I'll, I'll pull it up. Check well, out the, I'm right. So you said something that was kind of funny because <laughs> the less obvious answer and the more arbitrary answer is that 18 was chosen. It wasn't based on morals. We're not saying 18 now all of a sudden is like this magical number that when your morality kicks in. That's not true. But rather it was an economical decision. So overall, think about it like this. The median lifetime mm. earnings for all workers okay, are... Um, are, are that. For all workers that have a um, a high school, you know, diploma. So if you're looking at that um, at that whole thing, you, you're you're getting like um, 1.7 million, just under 42 thousand per year, right? About twenty dollars an hour. And over a 40 year career, those who didn't earn a high school or GED diploma are expected to bring in less than one million, which translates to more than slightly more than twenty four thousand dollars a year, right? That's eleven seventy per hour. So, obtaining a high school diploma adds thirty three percent more to your lifetime earnings. So let's not get these people pregnant until they're out. Right. The yeah. average annual earnings of people with a high school diploma there. So, you know, thirty two thousand six hundred fifteen sixty five. Clearly, there's an economic penalty for not finishing high school. It's almost nine thousand dollars a year. So we put a premium as an as a society on on. People graduating high school, so not not because not because it's in their best interest, but because from an economic standpoint, we can't function without a contributing member to society. If and nobody graduated high school because everybody's getting pregnant, you know, unplanned pregnancies disrupt that big time. Which is why, dude, it's so funny. I was. Are you saying the age of consent is driven by economics? No, well, I'm, because sixteen is the age of consent. I'm saying that kind, you're kind of saying that. I mean, I'm not like I'm not. It's not going to be accusatory. You're saying that. No, no, no. It's it, it's it's a mixture of things because physical maturity huh. is one. Yeah. Because guys don't mature physically till they're eighteen. But the other one is, which is a little bit more arbitrary, is economically. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I hadn't thought about that. Right. Because you again, the people who don't. If you had a country full of uneducated people bearing children. Would be a, a country of losers, right? Yeah. So it makes more sense that we put a premium on that right. age as being the age at which, okay, now you're uh, now you're into adulthood, and I'm sure like the draft and stuff like that maybe played a role in that, but economically that makes a lot of sense, right? And I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure anybody sat down and said, you know what, we can't, you know, have these kids. It I makes think. you wonder, though. Maybe. Like, what do the Bilderbergs talk about, you know, at Although, those meetings? <laughs> there's a ton of effort into it. I mean, have you, like, I was driving by Ogden High School, and this, I felt, like, personally embarrassed for myself because nobody else was in the car, you know. And I'm driving by Ogden, because Ogden High had a bunch of, well, it was a long time ago, but they updated the, the building and everything. And I saw a playground there, like, with slides and shit. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? High school kids don't want to do that. 
I was like, oh, wait a minute. It's Ogden High. Like, <laughs> It's clearly for... For their kids. Yeah, it's yeah. clearly for the students' children. Yeah. <laughs> while they're attending. I was like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a total idiot. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. yeah. It's just, I that's just—that's messed up. Well, well, again, that's. I'm glad there's slides for them. Well, you see, know? so you think about that. You put a premium, like the government, because that was paid for by. I mean, what the city, the, the city government. I and guess tax I dollars know. had to pay for that to some degree. Yeah, sure. Even yeah, it's the, kind of a it's kind of a social policing. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. It is. Well, they put a premium on those girls graduating high school because they know they're more functional economic members. If they're doing that, we need right? these women to be skilled members of our labor force. Need them to have a high school diploma, right? Eighteen. Well, but but the, the prop, dude. And they hit a gavel. The other thing, though, is it's just so damn funny because the other issue is it's pretty embedded in our culture and like in the media, particularly that sixteen-year-olds are portrayed as like sexual beings. Okay, I mean, did you ever see Britney Spears' first video? Oh, hit me, baby, one more Damn, time, son. She's yeah. banging that. <laughs> Christina Aguilera, Genie in a Bottle. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that was they nice. were six. Yeah, they were sixteen in that, right? Oh, that's and, then, and then now there's up. now there's Teen Mom. There's sixteen and pregnant. There's My Sweet Sixteen. There's all these things. And it's okay because like, I was sixteen at the time that that came out, right? <laughs> that's when Britney yeah. Spears came out. Well, it's or, okay that I'm being don't a creep. It, or if no. you look at if you look <laughs> at um, so if you look at the f- like fashion magazines, like fashion models, them selling p- perfume or those girls are young. They're the average age is the average age for them is 16 years old, oh. right? That's for a fashion model. Because if you here's the thing, you'll never you will hardly ever see a mid 20s supermodel on the cover of anything. You'll see celebrities because they're celebrities on the cover of that, but you'll never see. You'll never see a a twenty five year old selling some L'Oreal or something. You won't see that shit Jeez, unless they're dude. a celebrity, right? So they're all sixteen because they're trying to look younger, but be, but because we got this sixteen, you can look older, but also still look really young at the same time. Obviously, because you're sixteen years old, you look like a really young adult is what is what it is, and they really like that, which is again part of the appeal there. So I mean. It, it, it it's it's embedded into our culture. You see, it's funny because I, I swear to God, you'd see news clips of, of you know, we're talking about this child molestation, and then it cut to, oh, teen mom, you know, she she get a new job. She just like, yep. <laughs> we're having her on. I'm like, well, hold on a minute. Are you not glorifying being 16 years old and pregnant and all this other stuff? Like, well, yeah. And if on, you do, you can be now become famous, potentially make a lot of money. You know, yeah. It's weird how uh, society. And who knows what started it? I don't know if it was just deciding the legal age to drive was sixteen, or that being an adult's eighteen. Because think about the weird, random rules we have. Yes, dr- so driving, which is kind of scarier to me, you start driving at like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, but then drinking's twenty one, so smoking was nineteen. Yeah. It's like what? Why are these random ages? So it's kind of like saying, 18. well, it, voting's kind of dating. So let's wait an extra year. And then you can decide. 18. It's just some of it's so stupid. Yeah. 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 Voting is 18. Yeah. You can't drink for three more years, though. Cause so wait a little bit. It's like, you can go fight for your country, but you can't have a smoke. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like one of those dudes. I know. Yeah. Those that, old that's dudes the classic the shit that's said, though, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that, yeah, that, that's like those are like the cons, like the classic, oh, you can do this, but you can't. Which you is can't just do the that. Mess, really just the mess of politics, but the society does need to have, we have to pick somewhere. You know, we have to pick the rule or the age somewhere. How yeah. do we decide that? And and how does that change <laughs> over time? Yeah. But, uh, man, I'll tell you what, though, dude. Girls get a pass, though, I think. Like, this is... Th- so, like, what you were talking about earlier, like, the whole masculinity thing. Like, there is a huge double standard when it comes to that behavior. Like, if you Googled um, sex offender teachers, you know what I mean? Like, I swear the first five hits will be, like, 10 hottest sex offender teachers. Like, <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't Google... <laughs> Like sex offender male teachers or or male anything is like ten hot male sex offenders. Like you never, never. ever see no, that, right? And no. and I always I always talk to guys about this because when it comes to masculinity, this is where I'm just saying I think uh, guys are poised to have a really good opportunity to take advantage of that of that that kind of uh, preconceived notion that dudes are just you know these mindless angry beasts or whatever don't get me wrong i love being a dude i would never not be a dude right but like um you guys remember uh deborah lafave she was yep yeah okay so 23 years old right 23 years old 
and she um, multiple sexual encounters with a fourteen year old is what she, and and that was throughout various locations in the school right giving them oral sex in the classroom intercourse like in one of the portable classrooms all kinds of crazy shit right so then she she was on and she was one of the more famous ones because she was on court TV the whole case was broadcast on court TV and um, she served no jail time for this none yeah. none whatsoever. Um, that was part of her sentence. She had to register as a sex offender, obviously. She served three years on house arrest, right? And this was, and ultimately, having sex with a four, so again, she, she, 23 years old, having sex with a 14 year old, she was charged with, with uh, two counts of lewd and lascivious battery. <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the best sex offense you can get. Right, right. Yeah. And like, think if the tables were turned, if that was a dude. Having sex with a fourteen year old, he would well, just yeah, now it, be getting out of prison. <laughs> sure, well, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and think of the the things that people might say about it, or what even like the offender might say about that, mm-hmm. and ha- the 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 way it's the roles are switched on that too. So think of like the standard of you hear about that, like a fourteen year old dude hooked up with this thirty year old teacher. Oh, awesome! Like way to go, awesome. And there's like, oh yeah, you can't tell me he didn't want that though. If you if a dude said that about a girl, they would hang him. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> But the reality hang is, him. yeah, but the hey, reality what? is, is like, yeah. I mean, you are you Get trying are you trying yeah. to tell me that a 14, 15, 16 year old impressionable young lady didn't develop maybe these weird feelings for her attractive twenty five year old teacher? Like, of time. course, of course, that yeah. happened. Similar to that to, to that boy, but again, even it's so funny. Even among our offenders, they look at it completely differently. I know, like totally differently. You, you yeah, everybody's talk about, brainwashed, bro. Yeah, you talk about Brianna Altice, like, whoa, she's whoa, so uh, yeah. Which where, I mean, no. yeah, where was she? That, I, yeah, they, no, they, yeah, I, I, I would think of all people, our clients would catch on to the double standard yeah nope well and so when you think about feminine qualities this is why i say girls get a pass because that's um i think the i and i don't know if the statistic still reigns true but that at one time the highest growing and it might still be the highest growing population among sex offenders was female offenders right that well well, so what there's just something in the water now is that what's going on no since there have been female teachers and male students there's been female teachers having sex with male students right it's like the fedex uh the the fedex effect like you guys ever look at fedex and see the arrow in the in the logo yeah finally after that pointed out to me you can't stop looking at it now you're right right like have you ever seen that (laughs) no look it up look up fedex arrow just fedex just look fedex arrow yeah in logo you cannot miss it from now on. It's weird. So anybody anybody listening to this, just Google that. FedEx Arrow logo. Just Google that. There should be like one with a green arrow. Hold on. Internet's doing really good right now. Where are we at on time? We're, We're doing really nice. We'll mention time on a podcast. Don't talk about this. Loser. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Now you never, you'll never look at the FedEx logo again. I've ruined the FedEx logo for you. Anybody listen to this? So, you, so what's happened now between is between the E and the X, the right? Little arrow, right? Oh, okay. So That's clever. Wow. It's always clever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, motherfuckers, <laughs> they've been hiding it from me for these years. <laughs> Damn, it's weird that you're like 36 and you barely get around to that piece of oh, shit. Yeah. I know. But they, uh, but so the idea there is, is that now. Now people are paying attention to this. Same thing with the sexual assault with all the people. Like, this has been happening forever. What about Baskin Robbins, though? I'm looking at that. It's got a 31 in the... I'm just, yeah, I've seen to be 13. Yeah, I've always th- seen that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, if you think about this, like sexual harassment with celebrities, and Kevin Spacey's, Harvey mm-hmm. Weinstein, that's always been happening. But now the FedEx effect has happened, and now we're all paying attention to it now, right? Yeah. So the thing is, okay, here's, I guess, the... The idea here is um, I don't think it does a whole lot of service to not acknowledge that this has always been happening. And the question becomes, okay, how do we make things more inviting for somebody who's dealing with those problems to come in and talk about that before somebody gets abused? Like that's the objective, right? Somebody to come in and talk to us about this. I think we've had that happen, what, twice, Jeff, where somebody's came in pre-offense and talked to us about these things? Probably, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, right? Absolutely, and and it, and it affects everything a ton. Like they, there was a there was a British experiment that they did um, on British television. They hired like these two child actors. There's a seven year old girl and a nine year old boy, and they just stood them in front of like this outdoor mall, this shopping center, right, and left them alone, right. These two children, 
And um, 1,800 people passed by these children, and only five people ever came to them and asked them if they needed help. Guess what the gender was of all five people that came to their help? They were female, every single one of them. And they even interviewed the males afterwards and said, hey, how can we stop? And they said, well, I don't want to be looked at as a sexual predator. Right? Whoa. So, the, so these behaviors that we see with females as nurturing, as caring, as, as loving, those are pretty normal for females. Whereas if a dude did that, we're creeps. Like, what's that creep doing, right? But it's kind of endearing in its own little way, too, if you're doing it because I get a lot of praise for how I interact with my children, which, I mean, is just normal to me, you know? Like, that's just how I do. But guys are like, well, people are like, wow, I never knew that side of you. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you that side of me, you know? Like, I feel like I'm a semi-decent dude, you know? Whatever, so... So I don't know. I don't know. This is where... Yeah, which further just plays into shame and anxiety yeah. and then it makes the problem worse. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, so can you ever... Can you ever see this being accepted to that degree? I'm what specifically? Pedophilia. Accepted? Accepted? Well, let me like, hold on now. Let me clarify that. Yeah. I mean, okay. It shouldn't be. <laughs> so if I'm going to say it's like an orientation, like heterosexual yeah. and homosexual. Accepted as an orientation? Not endorsing the behavior, though. So right. if you think about it, homosexuality in the 1950s was categorized as a mental disorder. That's the thing you have to be really careful of that, that you're differentiating in that. Not as an endorsement of having sex with kids. Right. So because no like, they will say so I guess anybody that's listening this, they, they'll, they'll talk about the slippery slope argument. You have to set that aside and just look at this. Just examine it from an unbiased, I guess, scientific type way of looking at things, well, right? So I'm, I'm saying, Could can be society just be more willing to accept pedophilia as it exists as an orientation, not an action? Without accepting the action, just accepting it as an orientation. In other words, just don't condemn them outright. Certainly don't allow for sexually acting out with children, but accepting that the orientation exists and assisting them with working through the issues. Because treatment of this, you have two basic roads. You know, like the pharmacological approach, I can give you a bunch of Depo-Provera and, oh, and, you know, I, lower your libido. Uh, Long term, well, though, that's unsustainable. I, oh, yeah, it's, it's not going to work, right? So the only other intervention is... And that just presupposes that libido is the only factor that influences the sex drive, the well, right, sex offense. Yeah. Right. So, so the other thing is what we do, you know. Psychologically, we use cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to identify high-risk situations, distorted thinking with regards to those high-risk situations, helping them develop replacement thoughts for those, and then, you know, coping plans for when things don't go their way to avoid those things from happening. Because honestly, when you think about it, a rational pedophile doesn't want to act on their sexual urges. So, but, they, but they need to feel like they can go somewhere for help. Well, without the proper assistance... How are they going to avoid acting on those urges when they're day in and day out, cravings building, urges building over time and time and time without any assistance? I have to be able to create an environment where it's more friendly for these guys to come in and talk to us. Our entire careers are based on reactive, not preventative, right? Which is shitty. I know. I mean, there has to, in order for me to have a job, there has to be a sexual abuse victim. That's And I'd like it the other way around. Yeah. Where, I mean, I, I'm grateful that the work that we do prevents future sexual offenses. I don't like the idea that we don't create an environment as a society where people would come in and talk to me 100%. More. You know what I mean? So like I hope that, it can be viewed as, well. A, I don't know if or, orientation is the closest we'll come to describing what we think it might be. Well, otherwise, I just can't see getting ahead of this and assisting them before they sexually act Right. Out. I don't well, know how to do it. Well, and this is part of where that conversation was going. I was talking about earlier. Is you, So you start talking about some of the parallels here, how that comes along the lines of addiction, the behavior and addiction, right? Mm-hmm. Noticing I'm into a behavior here. I'm into something that I do want to stop, but I don't stop. Or I'm having difficulty stopping, or I cannot stop. So kind of saying, looking at this, Again, not going back to, oh, he was just out of control. He was addicted. But you could say Harvey Weinstein, probably a lot of addictive behavior going on here. Maybe things he didn't necessarily want to keep doing. And who knows, maybe just a crazy asshole and he didn't want to keep doing that. But I I would guess on a a large level of this behavior is probably these people recognizing, yeah, this isn't something I should keep doing. This is bad. This is going to catch up to me. Oh, I'm still doing it. Right. And I'm doing it. And it's getting worse. Well, and yeah. yeah. And dude, okay, there's a handful of dudes out there that have this proclivity going on, and they can handle it, and they work it out on their own because for whatever reason, they've developed a natural sense of coping abilities that allow them to do so. 
guess what? We never hear about them because they never do anything. Like, so why do <laughs> we even care about them? We're not even, right? But there's a, also a group of people that do not have that set of cognitive abilities to pull this off. And if we don't create an environment to help them, then everything's going to be reactionary after the fact that there was a sexual abuse victim and we're not going to be able to treat them ahead of time and preventing this. Right. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm not saying condone sexual, uh, you know, uh, to contact with children. What I am saying is accept that that exists. Okay. And make it more inviting for people to come, come in and not feel so damn demonized about these things. If they haven't ever sexually acted out, to the degree that they're going to come to us and talk about these things without having to feel like, you know, they're going to get beat up in the in the lobby or something. So well, yeah, it's the fear of it's the fear of detachment. It's the fear of rejection. If I talk about this, people won't like it. You know, yeah. my spouse won't like it, or my parents won't like it. Right. So I'm just going to stuff it while it just gets worse. Yeah. I'm genuinely curious how people are going to react to the stuff we're saying. I'm, I, I think I right know. now it's uh, not going to go over well because I think it's, it's <laughs> and, and understandably so. So say for example, you're you're talking about women being abused and suppressed for decades, hundreds, thousands yeah. of years. So it's going to take its tide right now, which going back to why we think some of this is coming out, I think a big part of it is Trump, you know, on tape is bragging about this, gets into <laughs> office. I think it's, in a sense, and a good thing, this is women's way of kind of saying, oh, yeah, yeah. well, fuck you. Yeah. We're going to start outing this stuff, which it's 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 reactionary, I think, to what's going on. So it's well, do, do, we, have, the do door. we have anything set up to like take comments on? Yeah, there's comments. Yeah, yeah. but but God damn it, look, we're not saying yes, have sex with with kids. We're not saying that. What I'm saying is, I want to prevent that from happening. But you, I you can't, open it up the door, bro. Yeah, but I can't. <laughs> I can't. As a, I'm pretty damn good at helping guys recognize this and getting them out of it. But I can't do that for somebody that hasn't committed a sexual offense if they're not willing to come in and talk to me about that. So what I'm saying is lighten the fuck up. That's all I'm saying. Like that that's it. And and if you're going to look if you're going to demonize Roy Moore, do so. Do so. That's fine. But use the appropriate language for what you're talking about when you're talking about dudes. Because you don't want to, if you do this umbrella effect, then people feel like they can't come forward because they're going to be categorized in the same way and it's just not appropriate and I'm just saying we can't if you want if you want more sexual abuse victims, yeah, let's keep up exactly as we're doing right now because we're not making any progress there. If we want to avoid this and be preventative, then yes, please, let's just start to change up the way we talk about it. That's awesome. it. Don't change your opinion about sexual offenses against kids, because I'm not going to. It's awful. You shouldn't do that. Change your opinion about the fact that people do have those inclinations and those urges and those those desires. And then we can help them before they ever do actually act on a kid. Okay, so don't take that wrong. If you're going to comment, make sure you do it appropriately. I won't even read it anyway, but there it is. Let's end on that. Yeah, we'll wrap up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap for episode six. Hope you enjoyed that one. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out on all the lovely social media outlets. Gorilla Social Work. That's G U E R R I L L A. Gorilla Social Work. Uh, we also have our website up and running, which is gorillasocialwork.org. Yes, .org. I was too cheap to pay for .com. So it is gorillasocialwork.org. We've also got everything up and running on iTunes, YouTube, you name it. So whatever your preference is there, check us out. Hit us up if you have any questions, any comments, any input. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, we will see you in Episode 7 where we will be talking about accountability. See you later. See you later.